We have gone through the effort to build this incredible parametric CATIA model, but it's important to note that the geometry here, these building features are not just parametric geometry. They've also been attributed with IFC compatible property sets that contain information related to the building features and building objects that will eventually be constructed in the real world. So here we see the BIM attributes that have been attached to a door. These attributes can be easily modified in this window or they can be extracted to an Excel spreadsheet and modified in a table format. So here we'll link a spreadsheet, we'll change the name, and that spreadsheet link is going to be saved as a data sheet in our 3D shape. When we open Excel, you see we have access to all of the data that we had selected and extracted to Excel. We can change the name, and if we navigate the spreadsheet, we can go to example, change the fire rating of these doors. In this case, we'll say these doors have a 90 minute fire rating. We'll make the change in Excel, and when we save this, it will be pushed to our 3D model. Let's also say that we want to tag all of these doors as door type D1. We'll navigate in our Excel spreadsheet. We'll add the tag D1 to all of these doors. We'll make the change in the spreadsheet. And now when we save this spreadsheet and we close Excel, we just need to quickly update the model with the attributes from Excel by clicking on the appropriate button in the link spreadsheet dialog box. And you see that everything has been updated. Now let's say we need to make a change in our 3D model to one of these doors. This is actually going to be a 60 minute rated fire door. Let's make the change. We'll go back to our linked spreadsheets. We'll find the spreadsheet that we had just created. We will update the data in that spreadsheet. And when we edit the spreadsheet, we'll go back and look at the fire rating fields. And you'll see for the door that we changed in the 3D model, that value has been updated. So we can make the change on these attributes either in Excel using the Excel link or we can do it directly in the model through the BIM attributes field. Now let's do a quantity takeoff. We want to quantify how many walls are in our model. We're gonna select the geometrical set that contains all of our walls and we'll press Control F and we're going to search and select wall cores from our current selection. Then we're gonna launch the Excel link and you'll see all of our pre-selected walls have been highlighted. We're going to extract the wall attributes, all of the attributes for those walls to Excel We'll save that spreadsheet to our 3D shape and we'll open Excel to edit the values. Now we can access all of that information in Excel. We'll do a quick count and see that we have 549 walls in our model. Similarly to what we just saw with doors, we have access to all of the attributes from our 3D model visible and accessible in Excel. And if we want to do a, a quick computation of the volumes of all of these walls, we can add a sum formula in Excel to give us a very quick number. Now we know in cubic meters exactly how much volume we have of our walls in our 3D model. If these were concrete, we could easily have the value of all the concrete in our model. And again, CATIA is based on a very robust geometric kernel. All of these values are extremely precise and we can have 100% confidence in the values of these calculations. Now let's go and look at the facades. Remember, we extracted all the cells of our variable curtain wall. In addition to the family typed extracted cells, we also have extracted cells by region. By adding planes to our variable curtain wall pattern, we created regions. These regions were extracted and organized into geometrical sets. Inside each region geometrical set, there's a cell geometrical set. That cell geometrical set contains a surface feature, an axis system, and four edge lines or curves, depending on the extracted cell geometry. There's a lot of information attached to each one of those pieces of geometry. For example, the cell surface has a curvature type, zero, one, or two. Zero is a flat panel, one is a single curve panel, and two is a double curve panel. We'll do another control F here to find and select all of the geometry in our geometrical set variable curtain wall cells, and then we'll link the spreadsheet to extract attributes from each one of these pieces of geometry to Excel. We'll give this spreadsheet a name, and again that spreadsheet link is going to be saved as a data sheet within our 3D shape. And when we open the Excel to edit it, you see all of the values have been extracted to Excel where we can make modifications or compute quantities and create pivot tables, everything our hearts desire with the Excel application. 
So here you've seen the Excel link creates a bi-directional connection between the 3D model and Excel where you can make modifications either in 3D or in Excel and then synchronize those two data sources on demand. For any building or infrastructure project, the likelihood that that project has a specific location is high. In this case, we've already imported a 3D context, but we haven't geolocated this project to give it a specific location on Earth. In order to do that, we'll activate the geolocation of our site and we'll copy paste, in this case from a Google Maps, easting and northing coordinates from the map. In order to maximize the visual impact of this model, let's uh, let's change some visual settings. Let's change the ambience to outdoor, and we'll hide some of the points, axes, and, and wires that we would normally see. Let's uh, change the visual settings and the visual quality. We'll start by making sure that the ground is not visible because that can be a little distracting sometimes, and we'll change the ambient occlusion. We'll, we'll set that to ultra and increase the, increase the intensity a little bit. Next, let's look at the visual quality. Now, you can make dynamic visual quality very high, but that can, that can get a little, a little draggy sometimes. We'll set the, the static quality, though, to ultra. We'll make sure that shadows are activated, and we'll make sure that the inter-object shadows are set. And if we want really crisp shadows, we'll increase the map size. Uh, also, uh, ambient occlusion can be modified here, but we've already taken a look at that. And, and at that point, you know, maybe we want to reduce the reflectivity a little bit, but we'll leave it where it is for now. Now, you'll see this model just glows. As we rotate around it, it's got great shadow, it's got great depth, it's got great uh, uh, highlights. And uh, with the outdoor uh, ambience in the context of the reference model, you can see this, this model is just a, it's a great a visual high impact model that's uh, going to be easy to uh, easy to communicate our design ideas and easy to to interrogate and communicate the construction requirements. So those are just a few tips and tricks and techniques to really maximize the visual impact of this model by tweaking a few of the performance settings. And don't forget, if you want to hide the tree, it's Control F3. With our outdoor ambience set, it's a great time to do some shadow studies for this building. In the Building and Civil Assemblies application, in the BIM tab, we have the Cast Shadows command. When we launch the command, because our project has been geolocated, we have access to the calendar, date, and time of this location and can see what the shadows look like at any particular time. We can view the sun path and the heliodon in our model to easily select a given date or time and view the shadows on and around our building. The Heliodon is interactive. We can zoom out so that it's visible. We can grab the sun and move it along any one of these guidelines and that's going to set our time of day. Similarly, we can go to the dialog box and control the sun's position with the slider. Let's say we want to look at the shadows at the exact same time, yet on different days throughout the year. In order to do that, we can select this guideline on the Heliodon that it spans multiple months across the year and drag the sun around on that guideline. We have different visualization settings to hide and show different elements of the shadows command. Let's show the compass so that we see where north is. And then we have the play animation capability down below. What this animation is showing us is that at 11 a.m., where are the shadows going to be cast every day of the year? We can pause the animation, zoom out to see the Heliodon, and we'll select a different guideline so that now we'll run the animation and see where are the shadows going to be cast on this specific day, October 10th, from sunup to sundown. If we want to look at a different day, we open the calendar, we select a different day, and we can rerun that same animation now we're looking at the winter solstice, December 21st. Alternatively, let's check the summer solstice. On June 21st, if we run the animation, 
These are the shadows that will be cast on that day of the year. Finally, let's take a look from the inside. We're gonna rotate around the building and watch the sunset from our penthouse for both the summer and the winter solstice.